I started in New York City in the late 70s. People sometimes need to see the gospel before they can hear it. When we first got here, there were so many immediate needs that we started there. And so that was part of what we said when we said, meet the need first. It's not the only way, but it's one of the ways to reach out to others. I was homeless and I was hanging out in the park. And um, I just became a chess fanatic. I met this guy and I said, what's your name? And he said, Chess Monster. And it wasn't until later that I learned his name was Lewis Taylor, but he wanted to be called Chess Monster. I noticed when he started feeding the people in the park, and there were no strings attached. He fed everybody first. And if you wanted to stay, you could stay. If you didn't want to stay, you could go. So that really impressed me at first. You know, left it to your own spirit. Chess, to me, helps epitomize some of the principles that we're learning about meet the need first. It's not meet the need. It's not just do some, it's meet the need first because that opens the way for so much else. The Annie Armstrong Easter offering, it helps in so many different ways, like someone who's hungry or gets food, or someone who doesn't have clothing that gets clothing, or someone who's having an addiction problem who has recovery help. But it helps them learn that Christ is transforming. And so I would ask for prayer for people like Chess Monster as God continues to transform them. Once that happens, things get out of hand. We'll lose count. And that's our prayer at Graffiti. I wanted to really punch Annie Armstrong hard this week. Um, next week we have our Easter musical, so I'm not going to remind you about um, Annie Armstrong next week. So listen up real quick. I do have my notes so I can say everything I wanted to say. Um, first off, this was super cool this week. Um, I was looking for another video to play, and uh, the IMB has those six missionaries that they give us to pray for, um, and those are the ones that they're spotlighting. However, um, as the offering goes on, they find random missionaries and they kind of throw them out there on their website. And uh, so I was looking for a new video to play and Graffiti Church popped up. And I thought, I know Graffiti Church. How do I know Graffiti Church? Um, so as I watched the video, I realized I actually know um, Taylor and Susan Field and I know their son Freeman Field. Um, so that just made me really excited that they were a part of the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. So I wanted to share that with you, um, a little bit about their church. They are uh, in the scary part of New York. <laughs> um, it's not like Rainsville, and they just started a church. Um, as you saw, they feed the homeless in the park. Um, one of their philosophies is doing small things at 100%. Um, if they do those small things great and to the best of their ability, great things are going to come from that. And uh, that's one of the challenges I want to give you today is to not only give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering because your money, 100% of what you give, is going to feed the homeless, um, is going to make a difference in people's lives in New York and in other places that are so much bigger than Rainsville who have so many other scary real things going on. Um, that's what your money is going to do. Um, but also I just wanted to challenge you personally. Um, as you go throughout your day, do small things at 100%, whether it's loving somebody. Do that to the best of your ability. Um, we don't have to go out and have this big, massive revival or event and expect all these people to come to know Jesus if we're doing it at 50%. Um, God can work through that for sure. But every day, if we just do small things at 100%, great things will come from that. And that's their philosophy at Graffiti, and I just wanted to challenge you to put that into your daily lives. Um, we are so close to our goal of $9,000. I think we are at $7,030. Um, so we're super close. We've got this week and next week, and I really want to reach that goal next week. Um, again, I'm not going to remind you next week, so go ahead and give today. Um, the offering's going to come around in a little bit. Go ahead and get your checks out. In the memo line, you can put AAEO, Annie Armstrong Easter Offering. Um, so again, I just wanted to challenge you. Thank you very much for what you've given so far, and please continue to give.
Thank you, Kelsey. And before we start singing, I've got a couple of announcements that need to be made um, before we take up the offering. Um, like Kelsey said, be in prayer of how much God puts on your heart that he'd like for you to give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Um, but also, if you look in your bulletin, we have our deacon nomination slips inside your bulletin. So if God places someone on your heart that you would like to put um, to submit as a deacon possibility, if you'll please do that now during this next song because right after this first song we're going to be taking up the offering and we need for you to please put those in the offering plate when it goes by. So if you'll please do that we would appreciate it. also want to announce that tonight we have a super important Easter practice. So for everyone that's participating in our Easter musical in any way, if you're singing, you're in the AVL, you're a narrator, you're in the band, um, anyone that's participating in that program on next Sunday we have an important practice tonight from 6 to 8. So here in the sanctuary 6 to 8, um, the Insanity workout group you will meet outside if the weather is nice if it's permitting if it's not you'll meet downstairs in the fellowship hall but this is my prayer for everybody that has been at the practices and it's also my prayer for you I pray so much this week that God will put someone in your path that you can invite to come to church on Easter Sunday with you um, and I hope that we'll all just have that in our mind that we're looking for opportunities to invite people because Easter and Christmas are wonderful opportunities that you can invite someone and most likely they will come because um, I'm hoping next week we're going to have tons of visitors, wonderful visitors, and that we will meet them with love and compassion and that they will feel welcome and it, um, feel like a part of us as they come next Sunday. But I also have a request of you. Um, Pastor has us doing studies um, about just churches and church information when we have our staff meetings. And it has been proven so many times that visitors do not want to come and sit on the front row of a church. Um, and a lot of times they're going to come in late. They're going to wait for the first five minutes of the service to start and then they'll come in. Because they're nervous. They're afraid, you know, if I come in and I sit at the front, are they going to ask me to do something? Uh, you know, like tons of people that I don't know are going to talk to me. So they choose to come in late. But then if they come in and the only seats that we have empty are the front row, they don't want to come in late and walk all the way up to the front. So here's my request to all of our normal, regular church folk. I know we usually have our own seats that we like sitting in, but for next week, as an act of service, if you would prayerfully consider, sit closer to the stage. Let's leave our back uh, open next week for those visitors who are going to sneak in and find a place in the back that they're going to feel comfortable to sit and be here with us. Um, so if I could ask everyone to please do that, that would be wonderful. I think that's all the announcements that I had before we start our service. So will you please stand, sing with us? I'm so glad you're here today. In the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been here in the same old voice, telling the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of the day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out. Somebody testify If you believe it If you receive it If you can't feel it Somebody testify, testify If you believe it If you receive it If you can feel it Somebody testify Save 
Father, we just praise you and we thank you that you are that chain breaker. Father, I thank you so much for every person who is here in this place today. I pray that they've come to worship you, to praise you, Father, and also just have a sweet time of fellowship with fellow believers. Lord, I pray for every need that's represented here today. No matter what someone here is going through, I pray that they will turn that over to you. I pray, Father, that you will supply every need that they have. We know that you can, Father. I pray that we'll just reach out and claim those blessings that you've already given to us. Father, please just be in this place, be in this service. I pray that you're pleased with our efforts, pleased with our worship. Father, please be with our pastor as he brings the message. Be with Sherry as she leads Children's Church. And Father, we ask you at this time, please bless this offering. Bless those who are able to give today and bless those who are unable. Father, we ask that whatever is given today, that you will multiply it. You will use it as only you can. We love you, God. We're going to pray. Amen. You may be seated. Come, come to the water, all who are thirsty. to the river brothers and sisters come and be healed sing it again with us come come to the water all who are thirsty come and be filled please stand come come to the and sisters come and be healed come and be healed we believe in the kingdom come we believe in the risen sun you bring our hearts to life oh, we come with our hands up high we believe you will satisfy you
Please greet those around you. church. If you have a child between the ages of three and second grade and would like for them to attend, just have them meet at the middle back door. Remember at the end of the service to go downstairs to sign them out. Straight. 
this road before me. You have seen it all and shown me. You have been and you will always be. Everything I stand on ceases. I fall into your arms, Lord Jesus, because you
Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. God, as we celebrate Palm Sunday today, and and God, we think about what that means. Easter week is is upon us, God. Um, Father, we're grateful for today because today you started the rescue mission for our soul. God, but as we really see, it, it didn't just start on Palm Sunday. God, because you have been, because you have always been, Father, because you had a plan long before anything was ever created to rescue us, to draw us into a relationship with you. Father, we're so grateful for that this morning. And and God, we're just excited about what that means. Father, we, we can't help but just think this morning about how grateful we are. that you cared enough about us to send your son to die on a cross. And and God, is again, Easter calls near. Father, we're just grateful for it. But God, we're not just grateful enough to come and sit in a service. God, there's a joy that wells up inside of us because we have the hope that the world needs so desperately. So Father, we pray now for this service that you just help us to continue to worship. God, as we continue just to, to read your word, as we continue to look at what your word would say to us this morning, God, help us just to realize that you've called us to be a part of this rescue mission. And God, you've called us to, to be a part of bringing the world back to you. Father, we're just grateful that you let us be a part of that. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We ask that you be in every detail of this service. Father, and that you get the glory from all of it. It's in your son Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. Good to see each and every one of you with us this morning. If you are a guest with us today, we welcome you. We are so delighted to see each and every one of you and uh, so grateful that you are here. Inside your bulletin this morning, you'll find an insert has sermon notes on it. If uh, you have your Bible with you, let me encourage you to open to Matthew chapter 27. But keep these notes in front of you. Open them up where you can see the full sheet there in front of you. We'll be jumping around a good bit. Today, I want us to talk together about a man by the name of Barabbas. Would you say the word Barabbas? That is a man that we want to meet today. You may have heard that name through the years, uh, but uh, how much do you actually know about Barabbas? There's not a whole lot to know. If you were to have a stack of Bible dictionaries and you open all of them up to the section that has Barabbas, first of all, you may not even find his name. But if you found his name, there would be just a very short section on uh, what we know about Barabbas. He's just one of those fellows. Scripture talks about and talks about him a great deal, but really doesn't give us a whole lot of information about him. Uh, Now, much of what we do know about him comes from the Bible, uh, but still there's just not a whole lot to know. I want you to look on your listening guide, Matthew 27. Drop down in the text to where you find verse number 16. Verse 16, at that time, and this is the time of the trial of the Lord Jesus, at that time they had a notorious prisoner, and his name was Barabbas. Now, interestingly, and on your listening guide, you have... Matthew 27, verse 16, from the message translations over here on this section. And one of the things that Eugene Peterson included in his translation of the message is that Barabbas actually may have been a last name, and his first name would have been Jesus Barabbas. Some of you have a Bible that will actually have a footnote that says that Jesus was a part of his name. Those of you that like the New Living Translation of Scripture, that actually has the footnote uh, where his name may have actually been Jesus, 
Barabbas. Now, they're on your listening guide. Mark chapter 15, verse number 7, has a little bit more information about Barabbas. Mark 15, verse 7, the Bible says, a man called Barabbas was in prison. He was in prison with the insurrectionist, and what the insurrectionists were, were people who just protested, they were known as troublemakers in the day. They were always the guys out there on the front line doing something. A lot of people just looked at them as stirring up trouble. But he had been arrested. He was in prison with the uh, insurrectionist, and he, was a, he had actually committed murder in an uprising. John's Gospel. When John talks about Barabbas, John just calls him a robber. The New Living Translation says he was a criminal. Now, even later in the book of Acts, when Peter was preaching in one of his sermons, he mentions Barabbas, Acts chapter 3, verse number 14. You disowned the holy and righteous one, and you ask that a murderer be released to you. So Barabbas really was one who had a reputation, but there's not a whole lot that is known about this man by the name of Barabbas. So we look at Barabbas and we ask ourselves, what all do we know about him? Interestingly enough, his name, Barabbas, may actually have some interesting things to say about him. There are some scholars who began to break apart that name and tell us some things about Barabbas. Now, whether his name really means anything or not, we don't know. But scholars just sort of look at his name and began making some deductions from what he was actually called. The, the, the word in the Greek, uh, the word that we get translated B-A-R, bar, is the word that means son. And those of you who know uh, have been around church for a little while. You know, we, we cry out, Abba, Father. So Abba, Abbas, uh, may mean father. So basically what, what you have is son of father. Isn't that profound? But they wonder if Barabbas may not have had a famous father. Back there in verse 16, a little bit ago, when we were talking about him being a notorious uh, prisoner, the idea of notorious means that he was famous. People knew about him. And when you look at the son of the father, we don't know if Barabbas was famous because of who his father was or if he was famous because of things that he himself had done. Well, there are others who take it a little bit further. And they look at the word Barabbas and they wonder if one of the R's may not have dropped from the word. In other words, it may have at one time been spelled B-A-R-R. -R. And if it's R-R, -R, then what you have is not Abbas, but you have Rabbas. And so there are those who think that his dad may have actually been a rabbi of some kind. And when you look down at verse number 20, when Pilate says, look, who do you want, Jesus or Barabbas? The, the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas. And so because of the chief priest and the elders, they had a lot of pull with this crowd and they swayed the crowd not to ask for Jesus, but to ask for Barabbas. Which means if his dad really was a famous rabbi, they would have had a lot of clout with the crowd to sway them in the direction of saying, we want you to let Barabbas go. Don't let Jesus go, but we want you to let Jesus, we want you to let Barabbas go. Now, whatever the case, Barabbas was in prison. He is called a criminal, a robber, an insurrectionist. He had even committed murder. Now, there are some people who say that Barabbas had this strong connection 
with the religious sector. That's why the religious folks could, could sway the crowd to ask for Barabbas. There, there are those who say that Barabbas may have actually worked for the religious culture. Uh, now, what that would have looked like is some of these protests that he had against Rome. In this day, Rome had a lot of power, and they were oppressing the people, oppressing even the religious sector. And so he was in prison because he had been protesting against Rome, and it may have been the religious sector that actually hired him to protest. Some people actually look at him as kind of like a biblical kind of Robin Hood. He was fighting the oppression because he cared so much for those that was being oppressed. Now, that sort of adds a twist when we start thinking about uh, uh, Barabbas. He was in prison, but was he in prison for doing good things? Or was he in prison for doing bad things? Had he been thrown into prison because he was fighting for the little guy and trying to stop some of the oppression from Rome? Or was he in prison because he was just a bad guy, rotten to the core, and it finally caught up with him, and they threw him into prison? Now, folks, believe it or not, <laughs> that's where many of us live. Some of you, you're good guys. I mean, you really are good people. That's one of the reasons we have our connect groups I try, I try to try to get you to understand we want you to invite anybody you can get to come to connect groups. We want you to have connect groups that other people will find interesting and then invite them to come together with you to get to know you. I believe in you. I really do believe if people get to know you, they'll like you. I like you. Well... Most of you. But I really do believe that if people get to know you, they will like you. You're good people. But we all have this same problem. On your listening guide, a verse you probably know by heart, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You are good people. But you're good people that have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are some of you here today, you've, you've never trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord. And, and we hate the word sinner. Our culture just hates the word sinner. A lot of people get offended. They come to church and the first thing the preacher does is saying, you're all sinners. And they don't like that and so they don't want to come back to church anymore. A lot of times when I'm talking to someone and, and that word comes up, I just ask people, how, are they perfect? Are you a perfect individual? And a lot of people will just say, no, I'm not perfect. Well, that which keeps you from being perfect is what the Bible calls sin. C.S. Lewis explained it this way. Very few of us uh, actually realize when we've done something wrong to someone else. But all of us have no trouble at all recognizing when someone else has done something wrong to us. That wrong in both situations is what the Bible calls sin. Now, back to Barabbas. <laughs> Was he a good sinner or a bad sinner? Was he a good guy, the Robin Hood of that generation? Or was he a rotten, low-down scoundrel? Most of you are the good guys. Some of you, <laughs> you've had some time on that road that led to nowhere, and you've done some things. You've got some mistakes that you hope nobody ever finds out about. You, you've been down that road. Some of you have been way down that road. Some of you, <laughs> some of you, you've been way, way down that road, but you have found 
what Jesus Christ can do in your heart and in your life. Barabbas is one who, just like that, whether he was good or whether he was bad, he fell into that category we call humanity. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This really is a very beautiful story. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is innocent of everything, and yet here is Barabbas, one who is in prison, one who has committed crimes, one who has even committed murder, and yet he is going to be set free. Let's look at the story. Matthew chapter 27, verse number 11. The Bible says, Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor. He's having his trial. And the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Yes, it is as you say. When he was accused by the chief priest and the elders, he gave no answer. Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply not even to a single charge. Notice this next part. He amazed Pilate to the great amazement of the governor. Now, now, verse 15, that was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner. His name was Barabbas. Say with the word Barabbas. Barabbas. Say it again. Y'all not with me here. All right, verse 17. So uh, when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, whom you call the Christ? Now, verse number 16 lets us know a little bit about what's going on with Pilate. Pilate understood what was taking place. He knew this really wasn't fair. Look at verse 16. He knew it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. Now, you ever seen one of these TV shows where it gets really interesting and all of a sudden it shifts the scene? Well, the scene is about to shift here. Pilate remembers before he left for work that day that his wife stopped him and said, here's what she said. Now, while Pilate was sitting at the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I've suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. Back to the scene here, verse 20. The chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Verse 21. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Christ? And all they did was cry out, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Notice they had no answer whatsoever. All they did was shout all the louder, crucify him. When Peter saw, I mean, when Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, and that instead the crowd was getting worse and worse. An uproar had started. He took water, set the water right there in front of them, and he washed his hands in front of the crowd, and he said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your responsibility. And notice their reply. Every one of them answered, let his blood be on us and on our children. Verse 26. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. Now, we've talked a little bit about Barabbas, and we're going to come back to him in just a moment. But before we leave this part, I need to at least get you to think with me about the crowd's involvement at this area. You see, they didn't, uh, they, they just chose Barabbas. They never thought about rejecting Jesus. But one of the things we need to realize is that when we choose certain things, we are, in fact, rejecting something else. When you choose uh, one kind of cereal, 
<laughs> you're rejecting all the other kinds of cereal, regardless of how much you like them. And when you choose Barabbas, even though you're not thinking about it, you are rejecting Christ. I wonder how much you and I choose things of this world without ever thinking that when we choose certain things from this world, we are indeed rejecting Christ. Now, why, why in the world would they reject Christ? Well, John chapter 12 tells us that just a few days before this event, on the next day, John 12, verse 12, the news that Jesus was on the way. This is the one the crowds will reject in just a few days. But notice what happens when they hear that Jesus is coming toward Jerusalem. When they heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, news swept throughout the whole city. And a huge crowd of Passover vi uh, visitors took palm branches. Now, how many of you know what today is called? Palm Sunday. This is why it's called Palm Sunday. A huge crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him, and they were shouting, Praise God! Blessed, uh, bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of the Jews. The crowds ran out to meet him. The crowd had palm branches they were laying out in front of him. They were so excited to hear what Jesus, that Jesus was coming their way. Now, let the scene turn back. Go back up there to verse 22. What shall I do with this Jesus? The one you were praising just a few days before. What do I do with this Jesus that is called Christ? And notice the crowd. They shouted, crucify him. Why, Pilate said, what crime has he committed? And notice they don't even try to answer that question. All they can do is shout, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus really hadn't turned out to be what they had hoped for. When he was coming into town, they thought he had come to do one thing, but as they watched him throughout the days, suddenly their whole opinion of him Changed. He was not what they had hoped for. If you, if you look there on your listening guide, look at Acts chapter 1. Even the disciples had a particular opinion about Jesus and what they had hoped he was going to do. Uh, Jesus is gathered with his disciples, uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Now, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. In just a few days, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So verse number 6 says that when they gathered together, the disciples asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? In this day, the Roman oppression was horrible. And, uh, and people hoped the Messiah would come and just break the oppression that Rome held over everyone, especially right there in Jerusalem. And as the crowd saw Jesus coming into town, they were laying down palm branches and praising everything they thought Jesus was going to do. But here he was about to suffer and be crucified rather than rise up an army and wipe out the oppression of the Roman government. And so the people were really kind of disappointed with what Jesus had actually come to do. Now, even the disciples are beginning to wonder. You ever noticed how fickle people can be? I mean, they're following you as long as things are going their way, but when things shift just a little bit, I mean, your name is great one day and the next day you, you can be in all kinds of trouble. Sometimes even those of us who love the Lord Jesus with all of our heart, man, we're all excited about him. We're praising his name one minute, and the next minute things don't really go the way we had hoped things would go, 
and all of a sudden our faith begins to waver. I talked just a few weeks ago with a young Christian lady. I say young Christian lady. She had, she had really kind of come to know the Lord Jesus a little bit later in her life. And she thought God was going to do all these different things in her life. And, and it was one of those situations where the bottom just really kind of fell out from under her life. And she was really facing some difficult issues. Some hard times were coming her way. And she, she was just telling me, I thought God was going to do this and I thought God was going to do that. Was I right in trusting God? It is amazing how people can become, I mean, people can get in that situation. One day we're praising God for all we thought he was going to do. And then when the reality of life hits, our faith begins to waver just a little bit. Now, you and I, we face those same kind of things every single day. So when Pilate says, what shall I do with Jesus? I need to ask you, what are you doing with Jesus? I know you love him. I mean, you're here on Sunday and it's raining outside. You got up to come to church and probably left friends or family at home. And here you are. You've come to worship God. But what about when life takes those unusual turns, those unusual twists? What do we do with our faith at that time? Do you continue to trust him? Do you... Do you have faith that regardless of how bad things are going to be, you're going to stick with him. You're going to put your trust in him. I mean, he laid down his life for me. <laughs> Not only did he lay down his life for me, but he rose from the dead. You ever think about that? He rose from the dead to give me life. Folks, I don't know about you, but I'm going to stick with the guy that rose from the dead. Well, let's go back to Barabbas. A criminal. One who had committed murder. That's a pretty big crime. And yet he is going to be set free because Jesus was going to be crucified. I wonder what, he was, what his life was like a little bit later. This morning, I, I mentioned that in my mind, I wonder if we made a movie about Barabbas' life, what would it look like after this day? By the way, we don't know anything about him prior to this day. We don't know anything about him after this day. So let's just use our imagination, if you can. Nothing scriptural about this part. But what was Barabbas' life like after this event? Did he... Did he thank the Lord that somebody had died and let him go free? Did he ever even think about somebody else being crucified while he was allowed to go free? And if he ever realized it, did he ever give thanks for what had happened on this particular day? If we made a movie about Barabbas' life, what would it look like from this point own. Use your imagination. Think through that particular part of this story. Well, let me take you back for just a moment. This is your story. It really is. We could very easily say, you are Barabbas. All the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you're here today and you've never opened your heart and received what Christ has done for you, you need to know that truth. Now, I'm not just trying to be hard on you. I'm not trying to be ugly with you. But the Bible says every single one of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There, there's no uh, good guys. There's no bad guys. Some of you are great people. But when it comes to this area of sin, all of us, every single one of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look there on your listening guide, if you would. Find Romans chapter 5, verse number 6. Notice what the Bible says. For when we were utterly helpless, picture yourself in Barabbas' place. He's in prison. 
Good guy, bad guy, doesn't make any difference. He's in prison. You and I were in the prison bars of sin. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and he died for us. Imagine what it was like for Barabbas when somebody came and said, Barabbas, you're being set free today. Me? I'm being set free? <laughs> it took them so long to catch me and now they're going to set me free? You have been set free. The prison door doors have been opened. Will you walk through? Look at verse 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Every person in this building has sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you've never opened your heart and received the forgiveness that Christ has given to you or offering to you, today I want you to understand you are Barabbas. You are behind the prison doors. And today, Christ wants to set you free. Now, I know many of you are Christians. So let me ask you something. What happened to Barabbas after this? If we made that movie, what would his life look like after he came to realize Christ died, he was released and set free. Well, if you're a Christian, that's your story. So let's make that movie. How will your life be different now? As you live out this fact that I was guilty of sin and yet Christ died for me, he set me free even though I was the one that's guilty. How will that movie look now you get to live that out every day of your life shall we pray together father thank you for our time together thank you for each person that is in this room that hears the sound of my voice and today i pray that we could see this picture of barabbas and realize this is our story for those that have never trusted christ i pray that today they could see that they are in the bondage of sin. They are behind those prison doors for sins that they themselves have committed. And yet Christ is going to die so that we can be released and set free from our sin. Father, for those that have never trusted Christ, I pray that today will be their day of salvation. Father, for those of us that have trusted Christ, we are writing the rest of this story. How will our lives be different because of what Christ has done for us? Father, I pray for this time of invitation and decision. And Lord, today, if there are those that need to open their heart, I pray they'll do that. 